going to be fighting for this one. Two players who know each other very well. Two players who are struggling to look tough and mean on their entrance videos because mm -hmm. they're both two of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. It's true. And we do see that two rogue bans have come out, so both of the players, odd rogues, will be out of contention. Makes a lot of sense because it is one of the best decks overall in the meta. And both of the players are packing somewhat unusual priests. Well, I guess the Zarek has become a lot more usual. But you, know, you miss turns in the Hunter deck. So maybe at some point when people start playing against it more, that's something that can be abused because you play early 1-1s one -one and then you do nothing for a couple of turns and you're still playing a tempo deck. That's something that maybe the stronger players will start to abuse as time goes on. But for now, Midrange Hunter is one of the most popular decks and one of the best decks on the whole of ladder. That will have to wait though, because right now we are going to see the cube block in play from Surrender up against this Tempo Mage from Frozen. And Frozen, we saw very, very clean play from him on the Tempo Mage. I clearly did not know very much about how to play the deck. Yesterday, he was making some strong calls as to when he was going to still try and control the board with his spells like Shooting Star and when to start going off with all of the spell pressure. And this, I think, should be quite a favorite matchup for the Tempo Mage just because. Oh, really? I, I think it's favorite really? for the for the Warlock in oh, general. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, the key card being that Spellstone for Surrender mm. and yeah. the fact that you've got some early board. The, the Tempo Mage needs to do more damage with its minions, you may suspect. True. And yeah, Surrender's even got the, the luxury because he has the Spellstone of tapping there. Yeah. And that's something that um, people who haven't played the matchup a lot fall into the trap of not tapping enough, thinking they need to protect that health total. But actually... What you want is to get that board established oh. and then just get a little bit out of range. Without a Luneth, the mage just cannot really burn through all the stuff that the, the Warlock can put on board. Thanks for catching me there, Lorinda, because I just kind of tunnel into thinking the Warlock hero power does damage to the face. Half the mage's deck does yeah. damage to the face. Kind of seems consistent towards just lethaling the Warlock. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's just they need to do that little bit of extra minion damage right. to than you would expect. Again, I mean, the mage is by no means out of it. It can definitely win the matchup for all the reasons you were going through there. Um, I think a big talking point also here could be the battle of the weapons, the legendary weapons, because of course Q-Block is very reliant on the Skull of Minari to try to combat early de uh, aggressive decks, and the mage needs that Alaneth to keep their fuel going. And of course, the Q uh, the mage never runs weapon removal, and the Q-Block has not found the space in the list, I think, mm -hmm. to run any oozes, so um, whoever can land their weapon will have a giant advantage in the game. Or who can land their giant will also have a giant advantage. <laughs> um, Ziliax, yeah. another big deal though for Surrender here. Uh, that extra health again, the mage is sort of teetering on the brink a lot of the time. If you can get Ziliax, which he has, oh my goodness, an even more health gain. Rosen with a very, very strong play onto the board with this counter spell especially, which prevents Defile and Hellfire from clearing the board. So Surrender will have to be very careful about how he proceeds. I think he is still forced to just proc the secret with one of these spells and hope that next turn the other spell goes off. And it will because there is only one counter spell in the list. Yeah, and this is important. If he Hellfires here, he's, he's going to only take the five because he's going to get countered. That opens up the Dark Pack, the Ziliax. He's just trying, I mean, Surrender's very meticulous. He's trying to work out, is there a case for maybe spellbreaking here? Obviously, though, you then run into explosive runes so often. And Frozen's sitting there, like, with the world's sort of... I think a good poker player could read that face. It's the face <laughs> of, I'm not going to be readable. Which secret did I play? And that's Surrender's big problem right now. I mean, the board looks so innocuous. It's a 3-2 and a 2-1, sure. Yeah. But these two have such powerful ongoing effects the Sorcerer's Apprentice in conjunction with the Spellzerker, which has been enraged now, is he absolutely is scary. Way, yeah. Surrender is actually, yeah, so on the next turn, he has the capability of proccing the secret with Dark Pact should the Spellbreaker stick. I don't know if he can rely on that sticking though. On the other hand, he also has Ziliax, which is really, really strong, so I can understand the line of play from Surrender. Maybe he thought that essentially just passing the turn with Hellfire put him too far behind, and he will be rewarded here. Yeah, Frozen now has to... These two are so high level that Frozen has to work out, would Surrender have tried a Hellfire there? Yeah. Um, or can I just go wide with my second Sorcerer's Apprentice? Because if that sticks on the board, 
the game is over. I mean, it doesn't stick because of yeah. I think he has all the license because the counter spell is still up, so he can just trade away his now useless spell zerker because it's been silenced, mm -hmm. ping it, ping off the the spellbreaker and play either one of these. Um, if he's expecting Zilliax though, I guess you'd rather have the other apprentice so that at least one apprentice sticks after the Zilliax attacks. He's not keen. He's not sure which way to go here. And actually oh, just thinking maybe wow, double explosive wounds are going to get it done. Just all the minions and not bother yeah. with the Spellbreaker. Wow. Oh, he's trading. Yeah, he's got to okay, take out the Spellbreaker. Otherwise, the, the yeah. Dark Pact becomes right. yeah. the, the trigger point. But now he's got rid of that. It is only Zilliax as opposed to two Hellfires in the deck that would be a problem. Unfortunately for Frozen, for now, is all three of those cards are in hand. Things are too slow in 2018, apparently, Lorinda. Apparently <laughs> so. Yeah. Zilliax gonna take out this Apprentice and put Surrender in a quite comfortable position. It's this counter spell that Frozen is really leveraging to make sure he keeps his advantage. And as long as the board is clear from Surrender, he will not have the luxury to proc the counter spell with the Dark Pact. Yeah, and that's really making things very, very difficult here. Frozen knows this, like, okay, if you're not going to play a spell, you just cannot clear this board. You've used your only minion-based removal, which is Zilliax. Oh, that's a good card. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Surrender. <laughs> Probably just considering, first of all, He's just, he's just considering, do I tap, I think, is actually what he's got to work with. Right. Because the giant is really good in the sense that it's a minion that will stick most of the time. If Frozen wants to remove it, he'll have to expend quite a bit of damage into it. And if he doesn't remove it, it gets to both trade into the... Oh, proc yeah. it right now, okay. He knows there's only one counter right. spell, so he's right. not mm -hmm. sort of feeling up for another. And he is scared yeah. of, and I was about to say this, yeah. arcane missiles and cinder storms, when you have an anomaly stuck on the board, they add up really, really fast. You've got to go for the maximum health. I'm, how bad was it to hold the dark pack there? I, it, it's super punished by Frozen removing the giant, but imagine the payoff if Frozen didn't remove the giant, because then you get to value trade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you want to make sure that if you need seven mana next turn, you can play it. I'm not sure what you'd need seven mana for, but there'll be a world. Yeah, probably... In many worlds, Surrender's play probably makes the most sense there. And now, he knows that this other secret is Explosive Rune, so the Hellfire will be able to clear both these minions. I mean, he may, he's may he got so many options now, he can, he'll can he want to plan to get this Doom Guard on the board sooner rather than later. A lot of the cards in his hand aren't that great. Void Lord's fantastic, though. You don't want to discard that ever. It just eats up missiles, and it stops the board dead in its tracks. So, I don't see the Doom Guard coming down. Spellstone and just trade with a giant is okay. The other, the other thing is the giant is kind of a win condition. Because the mage, if he draws a Lunath, just he keeps coming at you a little bit. So yeah, just staying alive for a turn and... Seeing what happens. This is the safest play into a Lunath, as you were saying, right? I mean, Fireball seems insane. Yeah, he just doesn't want to snap pick a lot of damage, make it look like he's just picked up three misses. And with the Spell Zerker on, in the hand and a discounted Fireball, there's actually potential to go for a 16 damage burst turn. You Spell Zerker, ping the Zerker. So that's four mana and then... Oh! That's going for the missile, so he's going to try and take out the giant right, right, right now. now. And this is something that we saw from Frozen yesterday, where yeah. he often chose to clear boards where we thought going for the lethal damage in the long run seemed better. Oh, oh my. no! No! Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. a disaster. As, as I was saying in the intro, without a Luneth, you don't win just by damage alone, so you have to try and force damage through. So understandable why Frozen went for that line, thinking about it. But... I'm not even going to call it a punish. A punish implies he was wrong. I think he did it right. And it just didn't work out for him. Okay, so he knows this is runes, right? So the cube is really insane here. <laughs> you can go face with the giant and... Yeah. Yeah. And he also knows that Frozen was desperate to kill the giant. So yes. he can possibly read that there's not much going on in hand. The only scary thing is that you leave up the damaged spell Zerker. 
But yeah. on the flip side, you present the counter lethal with the two giants on board. Of course, this giant will deal its eight now, put Frozen to 18, and then you have Hellfire in hand. I think maybe with Void Lord and um, Gul'dan in hand, you just trade because you're just not losing this game of Hearthstone. Like, okay. you get the Void Lord down, you don't take damage from minions. You get Gul'dan down, you don't take damage at all because you just keep healing yourself. And now Aluneth is the only problem. So you're no longer in the big hurry yeah. you would normally be in. It's true. I mean, technically, Surrender was just dead there to double Fireball, right? With the damage Zerker, and then the Zerker goes face as well. So he is going to take the non-caster vision play. Good job, Surrender. I got too excited there. Yeah, very... Because of his hand as well, that no risks were needed to be taken. Yeah, he's just so far ahead. Just the perfect two cards, the health gain plus the, the board stodge. Nothing Frozen can do in this position. Aluneth could still make some miracles happen, but it's not looking great. Let's see if you could play Aluneth in Miracle. Oh. <laughs> That'd be so good. Wait, Miracle Rogue? rogue? Yeah, just imagine oh. it was a rogue weapon. Ooh. That's just a staggered Myra's. <laughs> yeah. Which is what you want. You want staggered of uh, spiders. Ooh, yeah, we want that card. No, we don't. That sounds like a completely busted meta to me. Surinder's trying to work out if it's worth playing the giant because he's not facing any minion threats next turn. Um, so just having a casting his eye over it to make sure that do I need to win quickly? I think the answer is probably no. Frozen, digging and digging. At 26, there's no risk of him dying soon, but of course, once that Gul'dan comes down, it's five immediately and three more heal every single turn that Frozen does not deal with Surrender's face at this point because there's no way he's dealing with the board. We do need to keep an eye, though, on what he's accumulating in Frozen's hand over the, that yeah, last couple yeah. of turns with that Arcane Intellect picking up more damage and more spell damage. It's still possible. He just, he's got like two turns to get there before Gul'dan starts running Frozen completely out of his horses in a non-Aluneth world. The way that the Arcane Missiles worked out, actually, it was good for Frozen that they went face. Because uh, Surrender ended up trading the Giant anyway. That's just kind of funny. And maybe but that... If, that, if that, the Giant yeah. had died, then he'd have to have found another way of dealing with the spell damage that was on board. So True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's hard uh -huh. to, to reverse engineer to some degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Surrender now saying, okay, I've got to kill him before anything bad might happen to me because so this is a lot of damage. It's the Cosmic Fireball Face Ping Face. This is the best way to maximize the damage over two turns. Actually, the missiles also... Yeah, it makes more sense. You're so unlikely to draw the other Cosmic Anomaly the next turn that you got to rip it now. Yeah, you know it's not going to be there next yeah. turn because it's going to get pinged off. So, And you need to high roll to some degree with this hand. Um, unless you pick up well next turn. Yeah, don't yeah. ping your own face. That's not going to be fun. If Surrender goes to 14, Frozen has Glyph into Pyroblast as an out? I don't know. Even then, the Pyroblast puts Surrender to 4, then he heals to 7. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then Fireball Ping. So I think that's it. That's actually just it, Glyph but into there's, Pyroblast. There's still a Luneth. Then you but, start drawing 15 cards a turn. He's got two turns, three turns. He's got... Okay, a decent amount of... Well, I don't know. This is a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, I'd just, rather be in Surrender's just, position. Don't let me sort of say otherwise. I don't otherwise. think he has two turns. Not now. He definitely is just dead. Yep. And 1-0 to Surrender in the Battle of the slightly off-the-wall decks. No, there's nothing off-the-wall about any of the decks. It's just the lineups right. of things we haven't seen in, in any of the tournaments yet since the, the set was released and the nerves happened. And very well played by Surrender. A lot of those plays were confusing to me at first doesn't really have that much healing outside of its hero power. But it will be the matchup that you said was quite favored for the mid-range hunter. And Frozen has a hand that is very good at playing control in the early game. How do you feel about this hunter deck overall, Gia? Are you in my camp of you don't think it's going to be very good or do you think it's a real thing? I don't know how good it is, but I definitely enjoy watching it. And the fact that three players that are very well respected have brought it to a $20,000 first prize tournament. Sure, yeah. Means that it's gotta be good. I mean, it's currently good because I don't think yeah. anyone knows how to. I just wonder how, when it develops, if it's right. going to stay good mm -hmm. or if people are going to find out a way to abuse the fact that, you know, Dire Frenzy does nothing. Uh, Muscle sort of doesn't do very much either on the turn you play it. And maybe that loss of tempo, I feel, 
is something people might start picking holes in. But not yet. I mean, we're a long way from that development stage. I am just stunned by how Springfall could be printed when Alley Cat was printed, and Springfall just seems so good compared to that. Yeah, I think it's to do with hyenas in particular. Yeah. You, you get the instant buff on the hyena. Sure. Um, there's a lot of synergy with the other cards in the deck too. It's not strictly better, but it just seems insane. Frozen with a pretty good hand to stave off early board pressure. Because, as you mentioned, the mage needs to stick minions, so funnily enough, they need to be answering what the hunter has to offer in the early game. And Kirin Tour into Secret is a very good way to get a board rolling. These, these are the draws that make people play Tempo Mage. They see this, they're like, oh, my opponent couldn't do anything, that was fun. Let's do that again. I keep thinking that Tempo Mage is not a great aggro deck because it simply doesn't run any one drops. But the fact that it has this flexibility against other aggro decks to forego the one drop and then do a huge swing with something like Cosmic Anomaly Shooting Star yeah. definitely makes it have more game. Yeah, it's a weird position in the meta because it sort of feels like it should lose to everything. And in the current meta, it loses to a lot, but Frozen's picked it to do a job here against the decks he thought he was going to see. Rosen there decided to test for a counter spell with the Hunter's Mark. He had the option for going something like Coin Flanking Strike, which if there wasn't a counter spell would be an amazing play onto the board. But I think he realizes there are not that many minions he wants to Hunter's Mark anyway. And he might as well get that out of the way, save the coin for the on turn 5 for the Savannah Hive main, yep. and make sure his curve is quite solid. Yeah, and keeping that back, obviously, now Frozen just can't just lob an anomaly onto the board. Easy for me to say. And so he's got to try and stick some other things down. Ranking Strike is completely brutal here for Frozen. He cannot stick the... Well, oh, wait. Arcane Anomaly and Shooting Star seems okay here. It's not the greatest value, but... Apprentice and Missiles, if this goes wrong, might be a play. So he's 50-50 if he wants to, but he can just take the free guaranteed hit. I feel like I'm calling every single play wrong here. The Cinder Storm should be able to clear with the ping most of the time. But I don't know if Frozen's hand can get there playing control and max value. So this is the, the big part of this game now. How does he choose to take on the high main? He has a lot of spell damage. He has the Shooting Star. But he has no real comfortable way, so he's going to have to sacrifice something here or the high main's going to eat him. He needed Glyph and a Polymorph. <laughs> Even killing off the high main feels awful because it's just going to spawn two more things. Yes, yeah, so he's got. To, he, I feel he's got to try and find a way that the Shooting Star kills the, the things that come out of the high main, the Hyenas plus whatever's played next turn. Uh, he is going to have the spell damage from the spell Zerka. Oh yeah, pinging the high main here, so this is um, setting up the trade and then he's going to look for spell zerker shooting star sort of apprentice setups and surrender drawing three Frozen has fallen so far behind now he needs alaneth to just kind of get back in it and in the time that he takes to play that card and mind you even draw it frozen will have so much uh, i mean surrender will have had so much time to develop onto the board yeah this hyena for me, one of the best cards in the deck, although like, apparently board control cut them, for instance. Um, oh. for, me, for me, it's the card that makes the deck, but obviously that's not the case if strong players have started to cut it. It's going to be mighty difficult for the mage, not only to deal with, but it's just going to limit the time available for the mage when Hyena is just going to kill you in two turns. We are definitely seeing why the numbers have it as a matchup strongly favored for the mid-range hunter. Frozen just can't do anything. Hymen gonna come down the second one next turn for Surrender. Optionally, if Frozen plays a minion, and he will here, Surrender could go for some type of hyena play, but of course he's gonna be careful for second runes. Yep, plays the, the counter spell, I think, partly to represent the fact he might have explosive runes just to mess Surrender around. Um, so now can't afford to play in the order which he would like. Doesn't care. That would have been fine for him anyway. In just two more 2-2s. Two Frozen has had too many turns of dead draws. 
I, I don't even know how often you can rely on getting a decent draw against this kind of start, though. I mean, yeah, if your opponent's going to play two high mains against you, you're going to not enjoy your day at the office, particularly. This will be a really strong clear, though. Um, Expensive clear. Yeah. So... Between... So, yeah, you know, you know, now you have to hope that the five missiles land on the remaining two hy hyenas. If they do, it feels good, but then Frozen... Uh, Surrender still has quite a bit of... Actually, no, the counter spell would have negated this... Uh, well, okay, Animal Companion is there, so... The big yeah. problem now, though, for Frozen, if he doesn't draw Luna, is he... He's not going to go for one for one with the card advantage that the Hunter can generate, oddly enough. Maybe picks up Arcane Intellect. And he's going to have this, this ridiculous hyena. Props to Frozen for taking the patient line and trying to find an out for him. There is a world where sometimes, you know, both of those remaining hyenas are cleared and that maybe Surrender didn't draw a spell to proc the counter spell. Yeah. And a, a world where the remaining spell in hand wasn't Unleash the Hounds because very few spells in the deck actually deal with the board that Frozen had. And from that position, even on an empty hand, he might have been able to leverage, but not gonna happen. We do that's know that. Luna. Yeah, we do know Frozen gave himself the best chance, but that's all gonna be in vain. And now Surrender only needs to win with this combo priest. The roll draw of like. Which is another phrase I didn't expect to say at the start of the year. Yeah. This Hearthstone year, of course, surrender being at the World Championships was this year. Of course. Draw for Frozen. Kirin and Runes always seem solid. The Spell Zerker is, you know, one of the cheapest minions you have. And the Cosmic ain't too shabby either. I wonder if this is ever a full keep. Only the Cosmic seems a little uh, in question to me. You've got to think about how you feel your game's going to turn out. And I think normally, against a lot of things, you might just keep the lot here, but. You might feel the pressure of having to kill more than one minion. You're going to go coin to kill in explosives. So that's going to finish something. Maybe you want another removal spell. It is going to be a full keep for Frozen. Awesome. Surrender saw that. He shakes his head. And he's expecting the stone cold nuts now. Yeah. And that's going to be hard work for him. He only has the one minion in hand, which is always bad when you're playing combo priest of any sort. Um, if your opponent's going to occupy the board and hit you with things, blow up your first thing, you have nothing to play your spells on. You, you have nothing to do. Assisteria seems like it would be a pretty reliable board clear in this matchup, just because um, the minions all have around three health or two to three attack. And you have silence the proc a potential counter spell, so it doesn't exactly. it doesn't cost you too much to actually do that. Is that thinking far too far in the future? Nope. Okay. He I just has to feel, think far in the future. Yeah. <laughs> I feel really, really happy every time I even call one thing that Surrender does correctly because this is a deck that I'm not too familiar with. Grave horror, one of the key inclusions from the new expansion enters the hand. For anyone who isn't familiar, it's a 7-8 minion that starts at 12 mana and gets discounted by one for every spell that has been played so far by the priest. Speak to me. And Frozen not hurrying with that um, coin Kirin tour. There so wasn't much to yeah. worry about. The Acolyte does a funny thing on this board where if Frozen wants to get the spell damage bonus on his spell zerker by damaging it, he gives Surrender an extra draw. So I expect Frozen to just go face with this. That works both ways. If, he, yeah. if Surrender wants a card, he has to give Frozen the spell damage for free. <laughs> it's true. So... Frozen thinking there that Surrender probably wouldn't do that. So yeah. taking the initiative himself. Now he's going to go blow it out of the water with the missiles. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to do this because not only does it remove uh, does it activate your spell damage? It also just removes a minion, which the whole deck of Surrender revolves around the idea that you need to stick a minion at some point. And Surrender is immediately going to respect the spell damage on the spell Zerker, silence it. At least he has the other silence in hand to possibly proc a counter spell next turn should it come down and try to land the Masters area. Definitely don't want to play your anomaly into the Mass Hysteria turn. Bad things could happen, and probably will. 
Yeah, the best you could do there is have the 2-2 survive. So, Frozen's next turn is going to be interesting, to say the least. Ender knows that the secret is explosive ruins because he tested for counterspell. He's thinking about whether he wants to just throw away the Radiant this turn. I don't necessarily like it. He's probably also starting to count already when does the Grave Horror come in. So That's which turn can I expect that to happen? So if he was expecting, next turn is almost always Mass Hysteria. So turn six, he feels like he wants to have the full mana. Yeah. Okay, he's praying. He's praying. So the Hysteria has a chance of full clearing if the Spellbreaker attacks, uh, the Spellzerker attacks anything first or oh. Yeah. Or if either of the four attack minions attack the Spellzerker first, but... I think that's the best result he can get because the four threes always end up attacking each other. If, the, if, the two, if one of them hits the two, two, the other one can hit. I guess actually no, they can what? both attack that, yeah, okay. I mean, 2-2 two, two attacks 4-3, three, it's 4-1, then 4-3 yeah. attacks 4-1, yeah. yeah. And just that like that, despair. Frozen looks like he's going to kill Surrender real soon. He's got 9 damage burst from hand and the 2 on the board. So that's actually lethal presented. Of course, Surrender can heal himself. And he will, not because of the immediate lethal threat, but because of the ongoing build-up of damage through the game that you have to, to stop. You've got to heal at every opportunity. Unless you have some, like, amazing play. This turn is so bad if you just heal. Like, maybe he goes for Acolyte Extra Arms just to try to get something going. Mm -hmm. Hope It's unlikely that Frozen has the exact two-card combo for the lethal right now. Might be... In, in Surrender's position, probably just go for the Acolyte. He's not a fan. The tough one. And yeah, he is going to go for that. It's like, okay, if you've got it, I'm dead anyway. Most likely, I wouldn't actually be technically dead. And yeah. So Frozen. that he's dead over two turns. <laughs> yeah. Surrender's expressions make him look like a sad puppy sometimes. <laughs> but he has been a very, very smart sad puppy throughout the game. And he still has two more chances with the combo priest to get through. But it is going to have to go up against Frozen's mid-range Hunter and his Xerix. Which is running low on individual target just. removal. Yeah, this is going to be a race, and it's a race where one person can do things... Double divine! ...much cheaper than others, and much <laughs> less messy. One of the problems with the Xerix Priest, if you don't get the, the miracle, just win with Xerix early, like you say, minions and divines can get it done in a hurry. Cards like Mass Hysteria shouldn't be that great in this matchup either because a lot of the time it'll be one giant minion and maybe a couple small ones. Yeah. So the giant one will still survive. And with that in mind, Frozen tosses it away. The Psychic Stream is also very far from being useful in the early game. Just the Gargoyle to try to get some type of board pressure going or at least a way to answer these smaller minions from Surrender which at any time could become big threats. Yeah, you also get the coin which if you're going to win this with the Xerex as early as possible Getting as many coins as you possibly can is good. Also means you've got something in your resurrect pool. If you're trying to desperately scramble to put things on board, you can keep getting it back if, if the right cards come. <laughs> Frozen's reaction to the full keep from Surrender. <laughs> I wish we could have a little montage of both of them reacting to each other. And I totally get the reasoning for this from Surrender. It's Divine Spirit is absolutely the card you need to threaten lethal. Just with these two, as soon as you join Inner Fire, every minion is scary and of course keeping cleric with the pyromancer on coin has always been great since the beginning days of control priest and hearthstone a circle of healing would be insane here i'm just still trying to work out how quickly frozen passed his turn back <laughs> like he drew xerx and it was surrender's turn i didn't see anything light up it's true Job done. but if um surrender Whoa. doesn't be <laughs> it happens <Whoa. laughs> coin, draw three, trade into the gargoyle. I mean, heal the cleric, trade into the gargoyle, and draw a total of four this turn. I don't know about grave horror, but Frozen is in grave danger right now. There's a <laughs> lot of stuff coming in very, very soon. And this is the reason that people love this sort of deck. I am just waiting for Frozen's reaction to this. It is nothing. It is. I knew you had a good hand anyway, so <laughs> you guess. might as well have the absolute nuts if you're going to beat me. 
Look at this. He can even power word shield to preserve the pyro if he wants to. I think he's also going to consider whether to use the silence on the gargoyle. Like you're, you're in that position where how do I lose this game is a question that's kind of hard wow. to answer right now. You're right, Lorinda. I mean, what is there worth silencing in this deck when the Xerix minions come out? When you silence them, they grow back to full size. If they stick the Malagos or the Valen and you silence it, it means they probably already had one in the Death Rattle pool. Could yep. survive. I could revive it again. So, yeah, it's just good recognition. It's got a point out just the sound of surprise of your right to the there <laughs> was, was something to behold. Well, I'm glad that was a thing. <laughs> Me too. Me so, too. It felt so good. So I just want to point out if that Shadow Visions pulled Inner Fire, yep. Surrender had access to 20 damage from the Cleric. He mister. still does, right? If he plays the second Radiant. He does, yeah, and he's going to take the draw right now. He's going to go for it, and yeah, what can the Priest do on turn 5? Psychic Scream is far away. That is not Inner Fire, though. And he doesn't get the other Shadow Visions either, which is usually your bailout. So, second yeah. circle, let's just have some more cards with the other Pyromancer if we need them. Now, Mass Hysteria doesn't have a ch It has a chance of clearing the Cleric, which is obviously the most problematic minion here. But it's unlikely because both of the Radiants have to attack the Cleric and then the Cleric has to... Well, it will always attack a Radiant. Mm -hmm. But basically, the Radiants can't attack each other. So there's a good chance of clearing both Radiants. That might be enough to slow things down from where Frozen sat, at least. It's true. And maybe with what damage it has dealt, he can just clear a remaining minion with Liliax. Okay. okay. That's probably fine. Yeah. I mean, nothing's fine. You know, he's in a real mess. There's there the is the inner fire. fire. That was another oh, reason to play man. the Mass Hysteria, otherwise he would just be yeah. in Deadsville. It's worth noting too that the Grave Horrors are getting cheaper. He does have the circle though, to get the Cleric up to five. Yeah, it's really tough because you want to maybe save the circle for a Pyro turn as well. Maybe the turn starts with regular Hero Power onto the Cleric. He still has mana to play Pyro afterward. If you draw something like Power Word Shield to damage them both, then follow up with Circle of Healing. I mean, there's a turn coming up soon where you Whoa. you monster your cleric and then you play two grave horrors on the same turn. Yes. Uh, if those radiants were still around, that would have just been the play last turn. Just that surrender's window from his perspective of putting on the early cheese win is closing because Frozen will go to six this turn. If so surrender good. doesn't develop that big minion, Frozen can then play Psychic Screen and defuse yep. the pressure. Looking back in time, those yeah. two silences, imagine if Frozen had two coins right now. He'd be getting very close to his own crazy cheesy turns. And this is why we see Surrender cashing in the Circle of Healing there, even though he could have gotten a bit greedier with the Pyro. He wants to put on this pressure before the Psychic Human is online. Unity, precision, Liax, remove one Cleric, put Frozen up to 26. Now surrender. Every turn we'll be hoping the scream is far, far away. And luckily for him right now, Frozen doesn't have it in hand. Eternal Servitude will get back a Radiant at some point if he wants to go that route. But in a minute, these these silly grave horrors are just going to oh. cost zero. Silly indeed. Good excuse to play extra arms now if he wants to, just yeah. to get rid of the Ziliax. It's really strong, right? You can also heal up the Cleric again. Yep. And so one of your last 11 cards. Right, and what, what can the, the Cloning Priest do against this? Um, Psychic so Scream. Yeah, they, they have, <laughs> Frozen's can't. list has one Shadow or Death, but it's not big enough to be dead. Oh, now it is. Oh, I thought, I thought Surrender would go for the heal there. Um, then again, if it's you're, lethal next turn anyway if I'm dealt with. Yeah, if Frozen deaths this from from Surrender's perspective, then well, I get to stick a Grave Horror then, so I guess it's fine. But from our perspective, this is going to be the end of everything, I think. Yep. 32 points of damage and 7 mana. Yes, that is pretty much the boar from APM Priest <laughs> at its minimum length to deal the OTK. And there you have it, Surrender. We'll be taking the series and we'll be our fourth semi-finalist.
taking it in a very dominating fashion over Frozen, three to one. 32-32 Clerics. Turns out that's a lot of damage and Surrender will be playing Blood Trail in our second semi-final.